Usually, my biodiversity videos address the evolutionary history of a group of vertebrates. However, today we're going to discuss a clade of invertebrates. This is a group of predatory arachnids identified by their large claws and towering tail, so let's jump right in. Scorpions are classified in an order of arachnids, which are the eight-legged arthropods called scorpiones. What a surprise. However, before we get to the scorpions, we have to understand arachnids. But before we can understand arachnids, we must go through telicerates. The reason we have to do this is that this channel is very deuterostome biased, so we must manage some phylogenetics for the branch of animals known as protostomes. First, understand that protostomes develop their mouth before their anus embryonically, while the deuterostomes do the opposite. The protostomes are then broken into essentially three branches, arrowworms, lophotrochozoa, and ecdysozoa. We are interested today in the ecdysozoans, so called for their ability to shed their skin through the process of ecdysis. This clade contains penis worms, round worms, tardigrades, velvet worms, and arthropods. Arthropods originated at the start of the Cambrian, and the origin and evolution of this clade could occupy an entire video in and of itself. Thus, I'll be brief here. Although I would suggest you check out the Cambrian basal arthropod, Nereocaris, which has illuminated the origin of arthropoda. Arthropods are defined by having an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and paired jointed appendages, making scorpions arthropods. Within Arthropoda is a clade called Chelicerata, whose members are defined by having appendages in front of their mouths, making scorpions chelicerates. Other chelicerates include horseshoe crabs, harvestmen, false scorpions, whip scorpions, spiders, and mites. Now, the origin of chelicerates has been difficult to describe, and a number of different groups have been proposed as ancestors to the clade. For example, an order of arthropods known as Aglaspedida was originally thought to have been stem chelicerates, but evidently these arthropods were more closely related to trilobites. Also, the Cambrian Fushianhea was considered to be a stem chelicerate, but more recent analyses have placed it as a basal arthropod. But there is a Cambrian clade called Megachira, which includes Yawunik, that bears strong resemblance to the chelicerates, so maybe they are closely related to the chelicerates. Regardless, it seems that numerous lineages of Cambrian ecdysozoans unfortunately went extinct in the early Paleozoic, leaving no modern descendants. That includes various lineages of arthropods and other ecdysozoans, such as anomalacaridids, a group in which some members, like Schinderhans, independently evolved some arthropod characteristics. Next, within Chelicerata is the clade Arachnida, the members of which are characterized by their eight legs, making scorpions arachnids. Arachnids are primarily carnivorous, where most of the members are active hunters or parasites. However, there are a few exceptions, like the mostly herbivorous spider Bagheera kiplingi, named for the Black Panther. No, not that one. In Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book. Within Arachnida, scorpions have been placed in a number of locations. Some studies have placed them as sister to the Opiliones, which includes the so-called Daddy Longleg spider, Others have placed scorpions as sister to false scorpions and ticks, while yet others have placed scorpions as sister to the clade Pantetra pulmonata, including spiders, short-tailed whip scorpions, and tailless whip scorpions, which seems to be the current model. Previously, it was thought that scorpions were originally aquatic and moved to land later, having been identified as close relatives of the marine eurypterids, commonly called sea scorpions. However, it would appear that Eurypterids are more closely related to horseshoe crabs, indicating that the last common ancestor of all arachnids was terrestrial. And finally, we've reached the scorpions. Scorpions are identified by their three segmented chelicerae, remember these are appendages in front of their mouths, grasping pedipalps, which are their claws, a segmented abdomen, or mesosoma, and a segmented tail, or metasoma. The earliest scorpions are dated to 430 million years ago, or the Silurian, such as Paleophonus, 
And interestingly, Gondwana Scorpio represents the oldest terrestrial animal found on the supercontinent of Gondwana, dating to 360 million years ago. That was about the start of the Carboniferous, which saw a huge increase in the amount of atmospheric oxygen. The higher level of oxygen lifted some constraints on arthropod size, since they take oxygen in through the skin, allowing them to become massive. For instance, Arthropleura was a millipede that reached 7.55 feet in length, the griffin fly Meganeura had an over 2 foot wingspan, and the Eurypterid Jacalopterus got up to 8 feet. Speaking of Eurypterids, there was a bizarre Carboniferous Eurypterid named Megarachne that was, as its name suggests, originally classified as a spider. However, later studies revealed its true affinities. Of course, the scorpions weren't left out. Pulmonoscorpius reached over two feet in length. Strangely, more scorpions are known from the Paleozoic than either the Mesozoic or Cenozoic. That isn't to say we don't have any forms from the latter two eras. We do, such as Protobuthus from the early Triassic and Paleoburmese Buthus from the early Cretaceous. Original estimates for the origin of extant scorpion lineages put their common ancestor in the early Cenozoic but more recent fossils have caused that to shift into the Cretaceous period. Regardless, scorpions now live on every continent except Antarctica and are universally venomous. How scorpion venom arose is controversial and not likely to be easily resolved due to how ancient the scorpion venom system is. However, that doesn't imply that it couldn't have evolved. Just because we don't have an answer, that doesn't allow us to throw in assertions that have no evidence. Now we've come to the present, and looking back, we see an impressive history of scorpions. Their lineage stretches on for over 400 million years, and they have certainly undergone huge changes in their biodiversity, ecology, and morphology in the years since. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.